Hi. <laughs> Hello people, how's it going? Welcome back to another video. My name is Jordan Howes and today I'm going to be showing you guys how to take your photos from average looking on the normal boring person's Instagram into professionally edited photos using Lightroom Mobile. For those who don't know, Lightroom on the desktop version is one of the world leaders and most advanced photo editing software that's out there and it's what I use for all of my photos. However, a lot of people didn't realise that a lot of the big features that you'll find on Lightroom desktop version have actually been transferred over to this powerful little device here. And I think it's really important, especially if you're travelling all the time like I am or if you're doing other bits around, you need to have something where you can edit photos on the go and not have to worry about bringing your laptop. So today, like I said, we're going to be showing you how to edit your photos and make them look like my Instagram down below. Before you watch the rest of the video, make sure you go to show me some support by liking the video down below, leaving your feedback in the comments, and if you'd like to, subscribe for more regular content and whack the bell notifications on as well, because it all really helps me out. Thank you so much, and without further ado, let's get into the video. So, first things first, I'm going to be opening up Lightroom. The Lightroom app looks just like that, and you're going to be met with a user interface that looks like this. When you're on this app here, essentially what you're going to be doing is importing your media into your gallery. And the way you do that is by clicking the little plus and gallery photo sign at the bottom and importing media straight into the app. As you can see, I have one photo in here that we're going to be editing today. And essentially you can import as many as you want and, and go from there. But this is the first one that I'm going to be editing. So when you click your image, this is what you're going to see. You're going to come up with this little page here. And this is where all of the magic's actually going to happen. I'm going to walk you through all of the different settings and how I come to edit this photo so you can do just the same on yours. So getting right into it, we're going to be working through every single one. However, I'm going to start by moving on to these boxes here from auto onwards. This auto setting in the bottom left here is essentially Lightroom's version of what it thinks the photo should look like. So when you click it, it will edit it to what it thinks the photo needs and can be accurate sometimes, but also cannot be accurate in other times. You just gotta be quite careful with it to see what you actually want. Um, I don't tend to use it often because I like to manually edit my photos. So I'm gonna click the undo button at the top to get rid of that. So I'm going to jump straight in with the light settings and essentially there's a few different ones we can go through. I'll talk to, me, talk to you about them as I go through. Exposure being the first. So when we swipe the adjustment on the exposure, uh, you'll be able to see that the image gets lighter or darker depending on what you want. Um, and with this image, as you can see, it's quite dark. So right off the bat, we're going to chuck the exposure up a little bit. I'm going to sit it at about plus 50 to start off with, um, but we can always come back to it and change later. We can then go on to the contrast, and the contrast affects the difference between the whites and the blacks in the image. Um, as you can see, it changes almost like it looks a bit like the exposure, but it's actually just the difference between the white and blacks, as mentioned. So in this image, I'm going to bring it down ever so slightly. Moving on to the highlights, as you touch the highlights, it actually changes how bright the highlights in the image actually are. So if I do that, you can't really see the sky and also the headlights are going to be really bright. So in this image in particular, um, I'm not going to adjust the highlights like that, but I'm going to do it by using another selective filter later on. So we're going to leave that one for now, but you can use that in your images. Another one in this image, as you can see, is that shadows are very, very dark. So bringing the shadows down makes the shadows darker. Bringing the shadows up makes the shadows lighter. And in this image, there's a lot of shadows. So I'm going to be bringing the shadows up to get some of that detail from the shadows themselves. Um, and I'm going to chuck that up just to about there. Changing the whites affects directly how bright the whites are in the images. Um, and in this particular picture, I'm going to be bringing the whites down ever so slightly. And I'll show you why in a moment. Finally, moving on to the blacks at the bottom, changing the black slider like this, as you can see, changes how dark the blacks are actually in the image. So in this one in particular, I'm going to be bringing the blacks down to replace some of the dark parts of the photo that we lost when we were uh, bringing up the shadows earlier on. And as you can see, this is the before and after. Image is a little bit brighter now. You can actually see uh, into some of the shadows as well. So moving on to the next bit, it's the colour of the image. And looking at my Instagram feed, you can actually see that I'm a big user of colour in my images. I think that colour is really important and I like to make the colour pop in my images. So we're going to be doing the same with this photo today and I'm going to show you exactly how I do it. So when you click on the color option at the bottom, you actually come up with this page here. And the first thing that we're going to be adjusting is the white balance. Moving the temperature straight away shows the difference between how warm or cold you want your image. And in this particular case, I like the warm look a little bit more. So I'm going to bring the temperature up a little bit. Moving on to the tint, the tint affects how green or purple the image is. And I like the purple tones in this. So I'm going to be bringing that up just a little bit to about plus eight. And then I'm also going to be looking at the vibrancy and saturation. But there's a really important thing to do with vibrance and saturation. Vibrancy, 
as you bring the vibrancy up, it changes how essentially um, colourful the colours are, how, how much they pop. So it's actually really helpful to use and I use it a lot. So I'm going to chuck it to plus 50. But what you don't want to do as much is be using the saturation as much because when you chuck that up, it only affects the actual colours themselves and doesn't really keep a natural look. So if you are going to be using the saturation, try and use a vibrancy first to see if you can get it to where you want to be. But if you can't, you can use a saturation, but use it within moderation because... If you use it too much, believe me, your photo is going to look oversaturated and it's, it's a common be beginner mistake. So I'm going to leave it there for now. So moving on to the mix slider on the right. This is essentially the same as the HSL color slider on the desktop version of Lightroom. So here you can change what the, uh, the colors actually look like within the image, e.g. changing the reds to be more red or a little bit more orange. But in this, I'm going to be making them a little bit more red. And then on each of the colors, you can change the saturation luminance as well. So I'm just going to play around with a few of the sliders here, have a look what works for me, um, bring bits and pieces up here and there, maybe have the buildings looking a little bit more orange, looking at the greens, there aren't too many greens in the image, so we'll leave that, a little bit more aqua in the sky, and then I'm just going to leave the, the dark blue, purple and pink because I think they look absolutely fine. Moving on to the grading uh, wheels here, um, you're going to see basically three different wheels, the shadows, the mid-tones and the highlights and moving your little dot on the wheel here actually changes what the image looks like so we're going to be going around in a circle until we find what we might like in the image and for me in this I quite like the look of hmm, let's have a look hmm, I quite like the look of like a little bit of purple but not too much maybe bring that up to about there um, so I'm going to chuck that there and then I'm going to move on. But also if you need to, you can change the luminance, blending and balance of each of those. Um, play around with those as you will, but I tend to leave them. Um, I'm going to be spinning the mid-tone wheel now and seeing what we can get. Let's have a look. I quite like a bit more tea, like a little bit more pink there for the sky, but it also affects the rest of the image. So maybe we can have a look down here. Hmm, what do we like? I think maybe there looks about right, to be fair. Um, so you can see the image there. And then moving on to the highlight wheel. So changing the highlight wheel, I'm going to be moving this to see what we like, like, going around in a circle. And I quite like the look of a bit of extra blue there. Yeah, I think, yeah, I think a bit of extra blue looks quite nice. I'm going to chuck that one there. And then I'm going to be done with that. And I quite like the look of that so far. So here's a before and after. So we've done all of that, we've done the grading, we've done the mixing, so the colour I'm actually pretty happy with. Uh, so we're going to just move straight on to the effects panel here, and I'm going to talk you through a few of the effects. So texture here, moving that up and down, essentially just makes the image detail a little bit more clear. Um, but adds a little bit of actual texture to the pixels themselves. Um, and it can be used in good ways, but I tend to leave it alone. Uh, my images are quite sharp and quite nice anyway, so I don't really need to worry about it. Uh, clarity can be used really unresponsively sometimes, so make sure you're using that uh, pretty good. I'm only going to be doing small adjustment with that, maybe a plus six there just to give a little bit more detail. Dehaze is really important and essentially is the difference between having like a misty looking image or a very clear looking image, but can affect colors a lot as you can see here. And you don't want to do it too much. So I'm going to be chucking the dehaze up a little bit to about plus seven. Vignette in images is something that a lot of beginners use too much and it's where the corners of the image change color. I don't tend to use it, but if anything, maybe add in a little bit black might look all right, but to a point where you can't really notice it. So maybe just for this image, we could chuck a little bit in there, but then you can also affect where the midpoint is. So essentially how far the vignette comes into the photo. Um, and then the feathering is how smooth the transition between the dark and the rest of the image actually is. So we're going to be done there. You can touch grain if you want. It basically makes it look like a pit of sand, but can be used for certain photo effects. But I'm going to be leaving that there today. So that's the effects panel, essentially. Um, you can also go into split toning as well, if you like, um, which essentially changes the colors between um, a few like primary colors. But it's quite hard to use. But if you want to use it, you can try and use it to change uh, the different types of colors. But we're not going to be going over that one today in particular. Moving on to the detail part, we'll be looking at a few things like sharpening, which sharpens the detail in the image, but can also be overused some of the time. And I don't really need it today, so I'm going to be leaving it. But if you do need sharpening, you can bring it up, you can bring it down, and you can make the image look a little bit more sharp where you, perhaps you didn't quite get an image in focus. Um, 
and then that's pretty much the only one you're going to need through this. Maybe you could use a bit of noise reduction, but that's quite an advanced feature, so I'm not going to be going over that today. Moving into optics, you've got two options, chromatic aberration and lens corrections. Um, you can go research them yourselves and have a look into what they actually are, but they're not a bad thing to have on. But if you don't know and you're not sure, feel free to leave them off. It's not going to affect your image too much. Moving on to the geometry of the image, we're going to have essentially a few different sliders, distortion, vertical, horizontal, rotate, aspect, scale, and then a few offsets. But I only really use one of these and it's distortion. And what distortion does is actually moves the image to look ever so slightly wider or moves more zoomed in or a little bit like concave in the other direction. Um, and you can use that to create a more wide look on the image. So for example, now that looks a little bit wider, but you need to be careful because it distorts things. Say the buildings there, you can see them getting stretched. It actually does change the look of them. So try not to make it look too unnatural. But for this, I'm going to make the image a little bit wider. And to, uh, to stop these little white lines being in the sides, you can check on constrain crop and it will actually make the image get rid of those white lines, but still maintain the adjustment that you made. So now that looks a little bit wider. So I'm going to be leaving it like that. And that looks about right, to be fair. I think that looks nice. And then that's essentially all of the main adjustments for this. So before we actually finish, there's a few things I want to show you to be able to touch up an image at the last part. Uh, at the last part. And that's essentially selective editing. And the selective editing button is on the left-hand side at the bottom, right at the main menu. And essentially what you can do is click this plus in the top left and you use one of three things. A brush, where you can actually brush on the image. A radial filter in the middle where you can create round filters that are specifically edited and also a gradient filter. And to start off with, we'll use a gradient filter just to show you. You actually swipe it up like this and what you're going to see is this red lines and this red fade a bit come up. And essentially that's how much of the image you're going to be affecting with your next adjustment. So when you click the square, it will get rid of the masking layer, which is the red thing. And then what you can do is move the adjustments and it's only going to edit what you've actually got on the on the selective filter. And they're actually really powerful and I use a lot of them in my images. So for this one in particular, I'm going to bring it a little bit darker in the foreground. Um, maybe get rid of a few of the shadows, but I like it to look a little bit darker. So I'm going to leave that just like that. I'm going to click the tick at the bottom. As you can see, it's a little bit before and after there. And then I'm going to go back into selective editing, get another one and bring it down over the sky. And the reason I'm going to be doing that is because I want to change the sky to be ever so slightly different because I don't want to affect the rest of the image with it. So I'm going to bring the exposure up a little bit, but I'm going to take the highlights down to give some more detail in the clouds, as you can see there. Um, and then I'm also going to be touching the whites a little bit to create a little bit more of white in there. And I think that looks about right, to be honest. I quite like the look of that. So I'm going to tick it, see the before and after there. And the sky looks absolutely amazing. So there are two uh, of the selective uh, editing features I've been I've used so far. Going to go back up there. There's also a radial filter if you want to use it. It will affect like, a round part of the image. For example, say I wanted to bring the car out a little bit. I could put that there. Get rid of the masking by clicking the circle. Chuck the exposure up a little bit. And now that car is just a little bit more prominent in the photo. I quite like the look of that, so I'm going to leave it in. Last but not least, you've also got a brush filter, um, which you can actually use to brush wherever you want on the image. For example, if there's a subject, you can color the subject in to edit them specifically. And I also use this a lot, but in this image in particular, I'm going to be leaving it. So I'm going to get rid of that. But that pretty much concludes the last part of the image. There's a before and after, but there's just one thing I will personally do to this now looking at it, and it's actually bring the exposure up a little bit just to create a little bit more of a bright look. So there we go. And that's actually how you edit in Lightroom. So I hope you found that pretty interesting. And I hope you can see like the big difference between that and understood all the things. Feel free to ask any questions in the comments, but thank you so much for watching, guys. Just quickly before I go, I'm going to show you how to save your image as well. So if you click this little square slash download slash save button at the top um, and you click it there you can then get a link invite you can send it in all different ways but for now i'm going to export to camera roll and then that will go straight to your camera roll render it out and then you'll have the image ready to use so that pretty much concludes the end of the video i hope you guys have learned something today and if you have make sure you leave that down in the comments below uh, once again make sure you go follow my social media that will all be linked here or in the description below because it really does help me out when you guys show that support so thank you so much and thanks for the support you have been given already uh, i appreciate that so much uh, make sure you chuck the bell notification on so you see my content more frequently and tag me in any photos that you guys edit using the techniques that i've taught you today and uh yeah never know you might get a repost or something just uh yeah tag me what you've done and
and thank you so much for listening and watching. I appreciate it. I've been Jordan and I'll catch you soon.